Hey, everybody, it's Craig Syracuse of Walk in Fate. Now, I say this every day, I'm excited, but I truly am. I am sitting down with, as Vinny levy would say, the legend, the man, <laughs> Ed Wilkinson, who um, is retiring 50 years from the sales media, the tablet. Ed, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, I don't know where these last 50 years have gone, Craig, but uh, they've just flown by. I think, uh, I think it's probably an indication that I've had a pretty good time, had a lot of fun. Well, yeah, I mean, especially, you don't look like you aged at all, so uh, you, know, <laughs> you look exactly like you did when you started 50 years ago. Well, my hair's a little different color, but uh, <laughs> I, don't feel, uh, I don't feel like I've been around for 50 years, let's say that. Wow, I, mean, I can't believe it. I mean, you and I met, I think it was 10 years ago when I first started, and, and I always, you know, I always said to you, you know, more than a mentor, you've been a friend, I love you, you've always helped me. I mean, you were the one that, that sort of helped me get the job at the sales media, <laughs> through a, a mutual priest friend and I'm, right, I'm right. grateful yeah. for that yeah well you, you you fit in well with us you were contributed well to the sales over the 10 years and you know i love your uh, walk in faith series it's really uh, terrific following it uh, doing a great job well thank you thank you i mean i've had a mentor i know you did a lot of shows too on the block currents i mean you yeah. did so many shows so you know i had somebody that uh you know, I looked up to you, of course, and, and was able to learn from just the way you interact with the <laughs> clergy and, and staff members. So tell me, I mean, what's what's going on? Like, what do you have planned? I mean, I mean, there's got to be a lot of mixed emotion. People are calling you. I mean, what's, yeah. how do you feel today? Well, I, you know, I feel good. I feel like I've accomplished something that I've come to a, uh, a turning point in my life. And uh, 50 years, you know, that that's enough. You know, thing. a lot of things have changed from... Uh, the way we used to do things. So I'm, I'm looking forward to just having a little bit more free time. And uh, I'm still going to keep my hand in certain projects, special projects I'll be working on with the tablet and the sales. I've told them I'm available to do whatever I can. If I can contribute at all, just reach out. And, uh, and I was thinking, you know, going up to the parish here, my pastor and talking mm -hmm. to him a little bit and saying, uh, can I help out a little bit more? Because I haven't really been involved in the parish. I've been more involved on a diocesan mm -hmm. level. But uh, maybe I can get, uh, you know, do something up there and uh, help him out a little bit. My new pastor is uh, 20 years younger than I am. And I, I've known him a long time since uh, we've worked together on certain things. So uh, I think I'll probably try to do a little bit of that. So he's about, what, 70, right, you would say? <laughs> he's in his 40s. I told him, never say that again. I said, you make me feel old. <laughs> He One said thing, for the pulpit. He told me his age for the pulpit. I said, don't do that anymore. <laughs> so let me ask you, I mean, you 50 years, I mean, I know it, this is always a hard question, but what is the, the one thing, two things, three things that always stand out? Um, was it Pope John Paul when he came, Pope Francis? What stands out and what's something you reflect on? Yeah, well, you know, the, the highlight of my career, I tell everybody, was personally meeting Pope John Paul II back in 1995, uh, when he came to New York, I had a chance to go over to uh, the Nuncio's residence over in Manhattan, and uh, I was introduced personally to the Holy Father. It was myself and four other editors from the uh, Catholic press, people who had uh, his, you know, the Pope had visited their diocese during that trip, and we were all invited over to say hello to the Holy Father, and I gave him a copy of the tablet, mm. and uh, he, uh, he liked it, he smiled because his picture was on the front page. So he, uh, he kind of liked that, you know. That's amazing. Yeah. What, I was uh, blessed, uh, Monsignor Harrington and I, and I think you were there as well. We were able to meet uh, Pope Francis at JFK. That's and that's right. something I think about. I was with my brother this weekend at a communion and we were talking about that. And that's something that I, I remember and I am grateful and cherish to this day. What yeah. are some of the other things that you've done throughout your career you know, some, whether you impacted someone, I mean, you've inspired so many people, but is there anything else that stands out in the 50 years that you've been, there, been at the sales media? Well, you know, I, I think I'm really impressed by the kind of people that I've been meeting over these 50 years. Uh, sometimes you don't really, uh, you, you don't see uh, some of the good works that these people of faith are doing, but because of the privileged position that I had, I was able to, uh, you know, do stories and talk with these people and, you know, see people who are uh, on the front lines of Christianity, you know, people who are working on the feeding, feeding the hungry in Bed-Stuy and Brownsville and East New York. And, and then uh, people who, you know, who faith makes a difference in their lives. 
uh, people who pray in front of the abortion clinics. You know, these are people of real deep faith. They really put their lives on the line. People who have been arrested just because of what they believe. Uh, that's the kind of uh, thing that you don't normally see if you're just a, you know, a regular Catholic and you go to mass every week, which is great. But because of the position I was in, I was able to meet a lot of these people and really outstanding members of the church. Sometimes we don't realize all the good that's being done. Agree. You know, you know what I also enjoyed too is the people that I would meet, the ones that whether the people that would actually watch the net TV or inspired by the work that we did, because sometimes you, you forget, you say, well, is anyone even watching or am I really making an impact? And that insecurity could really take root. But meeting yeah. people, you know, when we would go to churches and masses and we were filming or, and just meeting yeah. one or two people that would, you know, would say like, you know, I really was impacted by your message or thank you. Yeah. That's yeah. something that for me working in the secular world, I never really experienced, you know, you would do a job, yeah. do a commercial and move on. But it was always this strong sense of purpose. And one of the things that, you know, I'm working on now and you and I have spoken about is, you know, just a sense of purpose. And, and for, for kids that are out there, young adults, I mean, there's a lot of people that are younger than you, but uh, for someone <laughs> out there that's sort of discerning or deciding, should I go after money or, you know, what society says or coding or whatever, they, you know, whatever's new right now that guarantees income or yeah. should they go after their purpose? How do you, yeah. and, and how do you discern that? And what would you say to a kid out there or a young adult that's sort of struggling with that? I would tell them to follow their heart. You know, do what you want to do, what you really feel good about doing. I mean, people have asked me, you know, what has been the secret to staying around for 50 years? And I tell them, I, I always loved what I was doing. So if you can find a, a job and get paid for doing what you love to do, I mean, that's the thing. Follow your heart, follow your interests. Uh, it, it, it's really what's gotten me through all these years. I've always been a, a, a guy who's close to the church. And to be able to have worked for the church all these years, it's just a privilege. You know, I was lucky. I was really a lucky guy to have gotten a job like this. And uh, so I feel good about it. And that's what I would tell people. Follow your heart. Follow your interest. Do what you want to do with things that really are interesting, uh, interesting to you. I love it. And also, too, you said, it, and, and I don't think, and I know you use the word job, but I think this was more than a job for you. I mean, oh, yeah. you were yeah. serving and I agree. I think it's follow your heart and, and definitely don't just take any opportunity because just because yeah. an opportunity comes doesn't mean it's from God, but to right. serve, like, you know, I always felt like I was serving, you know, yeah. and, and it didn't matter if I was carrying something or filming or on camera, it didn't matter. I always felt like I was serving and trying yeah. to make a difference. And there was such a, a sense of fulfillment and joy that yeah. you can't explain, you know, it's not about money. It's, I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, we know we work for the church. But it was just about serving a, a, a purpose that was, you know, larger than myself and larger than ourselves. Yeah. So what's next? What's on the horizon, Ed? I mean, are you, I know you said you might volunteer and doing bingo at the parish or, or whatever <laughs> you have going on. But what are you going to do? I mean, you have boxes and boxes of awards and trophies besides putting those in the closet. What yeah. are you going to do? Are you going to write a book? Are you going to do a movie, a documentary? I mean, you have so many interesting stories. What's next? Um, well, right now I'm working on a photo book. You know, one of the great, uh, one of my great loves has been photography. I've loved to go around photographing church events. And I have 50 years worth of negatives that I've been going through. And I'm putting together a book uh, of, of great photos that I've taken over the 50 years. I've got a photo for every year. And uh, it kind of like shows the life of the church over these last 50 years here in Brooklyn and Queens. So that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, the back of my head, I have a uh, a novel in mind, mm. but I, that's that's hard work. Writing is very hard work, uh, so I might uh, I might try to work on that. And and in my free time, I think I'll play a little more golf than I'm used to, and maybe I get to learn that game. You know, I like that. I think too. You maybe if you want, you can teach a master class. I think the knowledge and the <laughs> experience that you have, I remember too, was any time we had a question, it we I didn't even have to fully think about. It. Let's just go to Ed. And I would always, you were always the, the, just the soundboard to like, you knew everything about anything about whether it was clergy, about, you yeah. know, uh, hierarchy in the church. I mean, you're just a well of knowledge. Ed, I'll tell you, I'll tell you again, I know I could speak from my department and everyone at the sales media, how much we love you and appreciate you. I mean, there's a, the relationship that I develop with you goes way beyond uh, the sales media sort of uh, status. Yeah. It's, it's more than a friendship. I love you. And I appreciate yeah 
just your friendship. I really do. And I just want you to know that. And God bless you. 50 years. That's Thank you so years. much, Craig. One of, and, you know, one of the highlights has been the people that I've worked with, like yourself, uh, you know, real people who are people of faith and, you know, the church means something to them. It's uh, it's really, it keeps you going to work with people like that. So it's been a blast. And I thank you for everything and your friendship. Oh, thank you, Ed. Guys, listen, Ed Wilkinson, 50 years into sales media. I mean, he's a legend, right? As Vinny would say, I, I always screw up how he says it. But what do I want you guys to walk away with is that it's about serving. It's about a purpose. I mean, Ed served the church for 50 years and I served for 10 and the experience and the people we meet and the journey is something that is, is true fulfillment. It's not happiness, which is gone in a moment. It's, it's right. fulfilling, sustaining a sense of joy, peace. And Ed, God bless you. And I hope we can get lunch soon. We'll do that. Keep the faith, Craig. God bless. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and reach out to Ed 50 years. He's going to be volunteering at his local parish when they start bingo again. And always remember, guys, you have the ability to inspire and evangelize through your words and actions. God bless you.